Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's your boy Ricky Cadden at Real Life Trading Australia. I hope you guys are doing simply splendid today. Let's take a look at the SPY and what's happened uh, the last two days. You can see we've had a glorious move, moved about two and a half percent in total. Uh, now that's quite a large move in two days, especially on the SPY. And I did post yesterday my thoughts on what. I think is going to happen uh, over the next few days or the next couple of months, sorry. Um, so here's here's the chart that I've drawn. Now this particular charting pattern has been taken from the last time we created a nice V bottom and that was a decade ago after the GFC. Um, and as you can see, we did chop around a little bit here. And I mean, this is just my thoughts, most likely. Um, I thought that we would come up to about 288 and then probably look to roll back down to create some some sort of double bottom and uh, then chop around and slowly look to grind higher. So as you can see here on the ES, we did come up, we did fill this gap right here that we had that gap down from a few days ago and now we are looking to slowly reverse. Um, I did actually get in a short here on ES last night at 3 a.m. before I went to sleep. Um, still in the money, it's probably up about an R and some change, but overall looking juicy. Um, not all my trades were wins today though. Let's take a look at IOVA. So this one was pretty quick out the gate. I'll show you on the one minute how I was looking at this. So we'll go back here. So what I was looking at on the one minute pre-market was this bullish candle right here and these bullish candles right here. So we had some decent size volume, as you can see, coming in pre-market. And I thought, well, most likely if it breaks the highs of this candle, we're probably going to see see some higher highs. Um, I was actually looking to take this up to 1676, didn't quite get there and I didn't move my stop either. <laughs> so traded like a wingless seagull on that one, I, I guess you could say. And we did, I ended up getting stopped out for one R. So um, not overly fussed about that though. I did, I did go back and back trade this and had a look at how I would have how I could have played this better. Um, what I was looking at though was this uh, was this wave count. So we had the one, two, sorry, we had the one, two, three, four, five, and most likely I was hoping for this to come up a little bit higher, and I didn't quite get there. So really, I probably should have as soon as this big bullish candle came in. And this bearish candle came in, I should have moved my stop to about there and then just locked in some gains, but that's okay. Can't catch them all. Um, here's Cisco, another glorious, glorious gap of the day. Today, if I can find it, rightio. We, we gapped up, nice little retest gap, gapped up above these moving averages. If you have a look at the five minute, Beautiful, beautiful play. It actually did like it was did look like it was almost going to fade here, but as soon as the moving averages came in on the daily, it was just very, very quick. Very, very, very quick. You could have taken the retest of these high, the pre-market highs, and played that bullish. I didn't, um, but anyone that did take Cisco, that's that's exactly how you would have played it. Uh, here was a quick scalp on uh, on WMT, me basically just trying to get some money back from what I lost earlier on in the day. As soon as we came up, this was a nice gap. It, it did look like it was going to fade, um, so I was very quick to get out of this this trade, especially as we came back up into the into the highs. Um, but as we traded higher to the highs again, then back down to the fifty. Um, I was basically looking to try and take this at the highs, but there were a lot of large orders coming in. So I was just like, I'm just going to take my profits here and just get a little bit of money back for, and so I ended up gaining. So overall on the day, I, um, I closed out with a 0.5 R loss. So not a bad result, um, considering the trades that I took. Um, however, definitely could have played 
a lot better. There were a lot better setups, um, but there's always tomorrow. MU, I missed this amazing double bottom. I was actually looking at this, this double bottom right here and I thought this will most likely go higher, uh, but I didn't, I didn't want to chase it. So if you did look to play this on the, on the, on the intraday, you would have played this double bottom. This, this support level, if you have a look on the daily, this, if you have a look on the daily, it's right here. So it literally just traded, it, it traded straight down to a support. 37.14, beautiful buying location on the five minute, beautiful double bottom. You could have even, you could have even bought it again in the, in the, at the end of the day, but I was sleeping, so that's okay. Um, but if you did catch MU, well done. Now SQ, I got into some absolute zero puts on this around 3, 3 a.m. as well as the SPY, I got in some puts at 3 a.m. as well, thinking the market's gonna go lower as well as shorting the ES. So I am in a couple of bearish positions as we speak, um, but Square basically after this, after this glorious, glorious push up, it is also doing exactly what I thought from the last uh, stock review that I did. I did say the most likely will come up a little bit, fill this gap and then probably roll down. Um, doesn't have to happen. We can chop around around here and then go higher, but I'm just gonna, uh, stick to my plan and keep trading uh, and keep tra keep trading my plan. So um, here is the XJO, right? The ASX 200. We are trading higher. Um, pretty strange because the market was well, not really strange, but I did say that most likely we are going to chop around a bit. Um, that hasn't happened. We have come back up to these highs again. I don't think it's going to sustain that bullish trend, but it was a very nice bounce off the 50. So if we do get another little dip, um, I'll look to buy the dip on that. But XJO, just bullish to neutral at this moment, at this point in time. BHP, got to give a shout out to my good friend Helen, who bought on this dip right here at $36, well done. Um, we did speak about this. We've been speaking about this for the last few months, saying that this was the time to sell up at 39 and a good buying location was 36, 36.50. So well done, Helen, on that. Um, she also ended up buying CBA on this glorious little dip. So well done. CBA was a beautiful gap and go yesterday. Um, did come down, filled the gap and then just once again, gapped higher retesting today as we speak. Um, but CBA looking really, really juicy to go long. Uh, DMP, I, so Domino's Pizza. No, I spoke about this on my last review, well, the last couple of reviews actually, that I am looking to go long here. Um, as you can see on the weekly, we are at a very, very good buying location. So if you are looking to purchase some shares on DMP, um, I'm looking for a close above 39.92, um, and then I'll look to take this thing bullish. Here's WTC, WiseTech Global, beautiful gap and go, and more and Morningstar reversal four days ago. Uh, we have gapped up and just ran. So, I mean, we are coming up into we are coming up into some really strong resistance. Where do we go from here? I'd be looking at taking profits up here if I was in. Um, but other than that, that's Wise Tech Global. Moving higher by the dip. Now, Aussie dollar, I spoke about this a few times saying that we are most likely gonna go lower and we have, we're down now at 68.8 cents. Um, we're probably gonna chop around, we're probably gonna chop around here. We're not gonna keep plummeting. Uh, we most likely will get some sort of retracement and then I'll look to short it uh, again. Um, but that's that's all for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed your Thursday real life stock review and I'll be back next week on Tuesday to bring you some more goodness. Um, Jeremy is doing a webinar, a live webinar, where we are going to be introducing myself and having a talk about what I do 
um, how I trade, etc., and the plans for the future. So I hope you guys can catch that video or catch that webinar. If not, until then, love life, live life, and trade it. I'll talk to you soon.